Again, in regards to this fascinating subject, we must remark upon the outstanding work of William R. Corliss and his collecting of remarkable tales of ancient giants, but what's more, his general conclusive consensus, and in which, due to our own research, we also share. For example, he mentions on page 102 of his source book, Strange Artifacts, that, quote, the ancient people of most countries seem to have possessed in the strongest degree a faith of giantology, end quote. A feeling we also share, having validated our suspicions. He goes on to mention a tale of the astonishing size of the statues, said to have represented the beings who once dwelled within the true ancient Egypt. Quote, In front of the portals of the palace of Karnak are gigantic human statues, and in one of the courts are twelve immense stone figures, each fifty-two feet high. The adjacent palace of Luxor has two granite statues 38 feet high at the entrance. In the ruins near Thebes are three huge figures, now thrown down, one being 64 feet high, and in the palace of Parthenon of Athens, many years before Christ, was a statue of Minerva 36 feet high. The Temple of Olympia contained a seated statue of a god who rose almost to the ceiling which would have made it some 68 feet high." End quote. He mentions that entering these places gives one the impression that they are entering the past dwelling place of giants. Yet, what he goes on to say was found is astounding. Gaius Plinius Secundus, called Pliny the Elder, was a Roman author, naturalist, and natural philosopher, and naval and army commander of the early Roman Empire and a friend of the Emperor Vespasian. He wrote the Encyclopedic Naturalis Historia, which became an editorial model for encyclopedias. He states that after an earthquake in a Crete mountain, witnessed the complete intact remains of an ancient giant some 46 cubits long, or 60 to 70 feet tall. Beings of this scale would easily explain how such enormous stones were moved Yet how they could have been hidden from history is an unknown motive, which we find highly compelling. Just what could the Smithsonian be hiding? Established in 1846, it's a tightly knit network of museums and research centers exclusively and uniquely funded by the United States government. Nicknamed the Nation's Attic, and for good reason. Made up of 19 museums, nine research centers, and even a zoo, it's the official resting place for over 154 million historically valuable items. With an annual budget of around 1.2 billion public dollars, two-thirds of which coming from annual federal appropriations, it's safe to say that if the Institute needed to hide something, it would undoubtedly have the financial clout to do so. Through the years, the meddling in which the Institute has been reportedly involved in can be seen as not only overwhelming, but condemning of a hidden agenda. During our extensive research into alternative and controversial historical discoveries, we've often been confronted with such statements as, the Smithsonian people will be highly pleased to get their hands on this. Though, unfortunately, these sorts of condemning phrases have all but disappeared from mainstream media as the years have passed, they still do indeed exist within newspaper archives stored within the libraries of Earth, and thankfully there are many of them. As time has passed, reports of this involvement have become more and more elusive. This could be seen as a direct correlation with advancements within modern communications, the birth of the Internet, along with many other forms of learning, subsequently aiding in the distribution of said information, growing awareness of these reports exponentially. As a result, more in-depth and heightened understandings of evolution theory and the protection thereof becomes more developed and entwined with such institutions. Profiteers from these lies become guardians of secrets which could destroy their status, clearly lending to the possibility and motive for a cover-up. Although reports which hit the internet in 2014 claimed a Freedom of Information Act had revealed that the Smithsonian had covered up the remains of thousands of giants was eventually debunked. 
The flurry of attention it has created surrounding the topic, an allegation which we personally know to be accurate, has aided tremendously in the search for the truth surrounding these accusations. A source we highly recommend is a book by Richard J. Dewhurst titled The Ancient Giants Who Ruled America, The Missing Skeletons and The Great Smithsonian Cover-Up. It can not only be seen as a go-to resource for evidence of a race of ancient giants, but it also details the thousands of giant skeletons that have been found, particularly within the Mississippi Valley, as well as within the ruins of the giant cities over the past few centuries. It catalogues 400 years of excavations, newspaper articles, first-person accounts, state historical records, and illustrated field report, including more than 100 rare corroborative photographs. It reveals that not only was North America once ruled by an advanced race of giants, but also that the Smithsonian has been actively suppressing this physical evidence for nearly 150 years. Dewhurst shows how this suppression began shortly after the Civil War and transformed into an outright cover-up, this being due to Major John Wesley Powell, who was appointed Smithsonian Director, a strict pro-evolutionist. And finally, the 1920s discovery on Catalina Island, a megalithic burial complex with 6,000 years of continuous burials involving over 4,000 giant skeletons, including a succession of kings and queens, some more than nine feet tall, the evidence for which he claims, and with good reason, is hidden in the restricted access evidence rooms at the Smithsonian. We have in the past covered the fascinating legends and indeed recovered artifacts that have been found over the years within the Ecuadorian cave system, known locally as Cueva de los Tayos. The legends of the cave nearly all surround hidden treasures of lost ancient and giant civilizations, including the posit of an ancient yet inexplicable library room made entirely from a curious metallic formula. With caves with an intrigue, strong enough to even attract the attention of the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong, one began to wonder whether these legends be true. And when you bring Father Crespi's collection into the fold, the flurry of interest surrounding these legends, and indeed the artificial nature of some of the portions of the cave itself, all become easily explainable via such motives of discovery. Father Crespi, as the title would suggest, was a religious man and one who was highly philanthropic and also incredibly interested in the artifacts of antiquity. And fortunately for him and us, the location in which he lived was steeped in lost ancient artifacts, all just waiting to be recovered. Father Crespi was a man of modest wealth, and in return for curious artifacts, often found within the Taos cave, even reported to have given food in return for clear forgeries, offered by hungry individuals. Although he would offer more, and often money, respective of the artifact's clearly historical value. This allowed Father Crespi to gather a literal hoard of authentic ancient artifacts, many clearly from this long claim to exist metallic library, his collection full of metallic plates of unknown writings and other fascinating metallic artifacts. The reason for our revisiting of these caves and indeed the fascinating character that was Father Crespi is our recent perusing of new information released on the cave, deliberately ignoring all aforementioned facts, including the artificial nature of some of the portions of the cave itself, in particular at entrances, as if reinforced with enormous ancient lintels. Unfortunately, all that remains of Father Crespi's collection that can be confirmed as 100% his and authentic now only exist within the photos taken of him with his collection prior to his death, whereas the hoard of artifacts was ransacked and many replaced with poor quality forgeries. Thus, it is a mystery, and we believe conspiracy to conceal a lost history, which we find incredibly frustrating.